Islam, the crucifixion, and two goats. The Islamic rejection of the crucifixion of Jesus is based on the following verse of the Quran. وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ لَفِي شَكٍّ مِّنْهِ مَا لَهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ عِلْمٍ إِلَّا اتِّبَاعَ الظَّنِّ وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ يَقِيْنًا Another was made to resemble him. What this little phrase is usually taken to mean is that Jesus was not killed because another person had Jesus's face transplanted onto him by divine power, and it was this other man that was killed and crucified instead. A story detailing this is as follows. Jesus was with his disciples. and his hair was dripping with water. He then asked for a volunteer. Who volunteers that his face appear as mine, and be killed in my place, he will be with me in paradise. I will. Does anyone else want to volunteer? Me, me. Anyone at all? Oh, pick me. You will be that man. And his likeness was transferred. Jesus then ascended to heaven through a hole in the ceiling. So it was the other man who was crucified. While this is probably one of the silliest stories you have heard if you are not a Muslim, yet it is important to know that similar stories were told 400 years before Muhammad by the Gnostics. While carrying his cross, Jesus appeared weak, so Simon of Cyrene was compelled to help him. Jesus and Simon swapped places and appearances by divine power. So it was Simon, who now looked like Jesus, who was crucified. Jesus, now looking like Simon, was laughing.
however, two points need mentioning. 1. All Christians, including Gnostics, used various forms of the sign of the cross. 2. Their denial of Christ's crucifixion was due to the fact that they believed he was not fully human to be able to die anyway. However, knowing a similar Jewish legend about Moses helps us to realize that such stories are symbolic in nature, with a hidden meaning. The Jewish story is as follows. After Moses had killed an Egyptian, he was due to be executed. The golden fire represents the divine glory, like a halo. However, the sword could not cut his neck. The angel Michael came down. and turned himself into the likeness of the executioner. The executioner was changed into the form of Moses. So the real Moses did a runner. The angel now like the executioner, executed the executioner, now like Moses, so Moses was thought to have been killed. The main thing that these stories have in common is someone's appearance being transferred to another. The key to unlocking the meaning of this transference of appearance is in the rituals of the ancient Israelite Day of Atonement. There were two goats used, one to be sacrificed and the other to be sent away. However, there was one necessary condition. Both goats had to be identical. We can therefore compare these stories with the Day of Atonement rituals. Solomon's Temple The executioner tried to behead Moses ten times. Yet according to the Bible, Solomon's temple had ten lampstands in the main area of the temple. There were also two other special lampstands before the Holy of Holies, the Menorah and the Bronze Serpent. The high priest leaving the temple after performing the usual morning rituals represents the ten attempts at beheading. But how can a lamp represent a sword? The Bible also talks about a sharp, two-edged sword coming out of the mouth.
but the only thing that really comes out of the mouth is the tongue. And it is the wordplay with tongues of fire that gives us the flames of the lamps representing the swords. Islamic tradition also states that a sword can represent light, because the Arabs used to signal by brandishing their swords in the sun so that they flashed light mirrors. Next, the high priest immersed himself in the bronze basin. This is why Jesus's face was dripping with water. The high priest then placed his hands on the head of a bull and confessed his sins. Two identical goats were then presented to him to choose which would be killed and which sent away. This was symbolized by the appearances changing, Jesus's face being transferred fits better later. The goat to be killed had red wool tied around its neck, and the goat to be sent away had red wool tied to its horns. The goat with wool around its neck was symbolized by beheading Moses's executioner. He then returned to the bull and confessed the sins of all the priests. The bull was then killed and its blood afterwards sprinkled in the temple. The goat was then killed and its blood afterwards sprinkled in the temple as well. He then placed his hands on the other goat and confessed the sins of all the people. The three confessions were symbolized by Jesus asking three times for a volunteer. By placing his hands on the goat, the high priest identified himself with it, symbolizing Jesus's face being transferred. This goat was then sent away. The goat being sent away was symbolized by Moses doing a runner. Afterwards, the high priest went into the Holy of Holies. This was symbolized by Jesus ascending into heaven. The high priest then performed the usual evening rituals, which included burning incense.
he would then raise his hands in prayer. This would symbolize the crucifixions. Jesus laughing is linked to the high priest saying the divine name, Jehovah, or Yahweh. According to Jewish legends, when we do hard work we say, Hiwa, Hia, like huffing and puffing. Huff. Puff. Huff. Puff. Hiwa. Hia. Hiwa. Hia. The divine name was symbolized by repeating the HH sound, in either heavy breathing, or laughing. Therefore, these three stories, while appearing silly, are actually based on ancient temple symbolism. This plausibly implies that the stories of someone else being crucified in place of Jesus, could easily have come from the disciples of Jesus himself, making the Islamic stories absolutely authentic. Someone died in place of Jesus. I heard this from Tom. Who heard it from Dick? Who heard it from Harry? Who heard it from the disciples? They did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, but another was made to resemble him to them. However, it could be that the real crucifixion was that someone was crucified in place of Jesus, implying that the Gospels should not be interpreted as literally true, but as symbolic temple stories. For example, one account has that Judas hanged himself. But another has that he fell down from the height. This is usually explained by saying that he fell after the rope broke. Yet these two different methods of dying can easily be explained by what happened to the goat that was sent away. After the main rituals, another man took the goat to a cliff edge. He took some of the wool from the horns and tied it to a rock. He then pushed the goat off the cliff. <coughs> so the tide wool and the pushing signify Judas hanging and falling. Therefore, are the accounts of Judas's death based on reality, or are they symbolic temple stories? Similarly, we mentioned that the divine name was symbolized by repeating the HH sound, in either heavy breathing or laughing. Yet when Jesus died on the cross we are told that he breathed his last. <sighs> so 
So was he crucified? Or is the whole episode an invented story based on temple rituals? Of course, Christians would probably prefer to say that Jesus fulfilled the temple rituals by his death and resurrection. This would imply that his disciples deliberately kept the substitution secret and most of the people wrongly thinking that Jesus himself was crucified. Christian polemics criticize this possibility by asking why the God of truth would allow such a deception. However, the Bible itself sometimes says that God sends delusions to people, and this would then be no different. However, it is important to note that the Arabic text of the Quran is not so clear. Most Islamic translations have a different translation as being the more general, so it was made to appear. Christian polemics have tried to reinterpret this verse as implying that Jesus's real crucifixion is not denied here. For example, the Jews did not actually kill or crucify Jesus at all, the Romans did. Hence the Quran means that the killing was made to appear as being of the Jews when it really was of the Romans. However, because it was the Jews who handed Jesus over to the Romans, the force of this interpretation is reduced. Yet, in reality, no one killed Jesus at all. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. This confirms what Jesus said elsewhere, no one takes my life from me, but I lay it down of myself, this command I have received from my Father, in Quranic phraseology, by Allah's leave. Having said this, he breathed his last. Yet these words above are virtually equivalent to what the Quran says just afterwards. Rather, Allah raised him to himself. That Jesus was raised non-bodily from the cross to heaven is confirmed by some earlier words he spoke to the penitent thief. Today you will be with me in paradise. So could this mean that the Quran plausibly might not be against the real crucifixion of Jesus? Summary Christianity, Islam. Let us compare these two views of the crucifixion. The Bible clearly says that Jesus was crucified. We believe that the Bible has been corrupted. The Quran says that someone else was crucified. but other interpretations are possible. Yet the Quran talks about Jesus' death.
we believe that this refers to his second coming. According to Islamic teaching, Jesus will return to earth, wage war, marry, have children, and die, to be raised up at the last day. The early Gnostics preserved the true Christianity about the substitution of Jesus. We also could say that the Ismaili Shia have preserved the true Islam, accepting that Jesus died on the cross. The Ismailis are shown on a map of Islamic majority areas. Can you spot them? And a few other scattered blobs. However, in about 1000 CE, the Ismaili Fatimid Caliphate was very extensive. So overall, the crucifixion could have either interpretation, with Christians preferring Jesus being killed, and Muslims only a substitute. Thank you for watching. The next presentation will deal with the Islamic view of Jesus's second coming.